Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here, and today we're going to be going over everything we learned in the latest episode of Inside Battlefield, that's the podcast that you guys can find on Spotify and other places, because whilst most of the information there was sort of rehashed, most of it was about the Redux that is coming next week for Battlefield 2042, there were some interesting little tidbits to take away from this moment, and also some interesting things that have been coming out on Twitter recently, or X. I just, yeah, let's just, can we just keep on calling it Twitter, please? This is just too confusing for my brain. So we're going to go over all of that stuff in a second. But as always, if you guys do enjoy the content here on the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. Hit the like down below. Thank you so much, guys, for your support. We are almost at 48 thousand subscribers so let's just see how quickly we can get there cheers for that so as most of you will know by now next week we are of course getting battlefield redux that is going to go on for six weeks and essentially if you haven't heard it is the return of all of the mid-season events from three of the past seasons so season two season three and season four so if you're a new player and you never got a chance to experience those events for yourself now is going to be your chance however they did go over a few of these small differences that are going to be coming in that even older players who have already played these events will find to be a bit of a breath of fresh air. So first of all here, shut down. That was the season four game mode on Flashpoint, I believe, where you got the lances that you had to like plant on the ground and then you gathered the intel. I believe that was an eight versus eight game mode on Flashpoint. They are now also going to open that up to 12 versus 12. So I think that was one of the main bits of feedback that the player count was a little bit low there. So they've rightfully so listened to us and increased that ever so slightly. It's not clear whether they're going to have 8v8 and 12v12 or whether they've just basically redesigned it to work for 12v12. And they said what they're going to do here is they're going to go in order of how the original events came out. So the first couple of weeks, I guess, is going to see the Liquidators event. The weeks after that is going to be the Battle of Nordvik, which is the Season 3 stuff, and then you're finally going to end on shutdown for Season 4. Speaking of the Battle of Nordvik, they did expand on this a little bit. Originally, both of the game modes that are coming here, Conquest Assault and then Breakthrough Chaos, were only playable on the Spearhead map, which is, of course, the map that came with Season 3. But they are now going to expand the amount of maps that you can play that particular game mode on. They also said that they're going to increase the amount of weather effects so I'm assuming they're talking, you know, tornadoes, rain, wind, all of those kinds of weather effects that you see in your general Battlefield 2042 match. Those things are presumably going to happen much more frequently in these mid-season events or these Redux events now. So depending on whether you are a fan of those weather events or not, then this is either a good thing or a bad thing. And then just as a reminder, all of the rewards for this event will be completely unlockable by playing any game mode. So you don't have to necessarily take part in the Redux events. You can just hop on Conquest, you can hop into Breakthrough or Rush or whatever you like, and you will still earn these ribbons, which will help unlock the rewards. And I think that's definitely, you know, the route to go. A lot of people have already played these events. Maybe some people like them more than others. Um, you know, you don't want to be sort of shoehorned into playing these events just to unlock certain rewards. So it's cool that everybody will get these rewards regardless of whether you like those game modes or not. And they're also going to feature a number of double XP weekends throughout Redux, so you should have no problem whatsoever in unlocking everything. So there's your little Redux recap there, but let's move into some of the more interesting stuff, in my opinion at least, in today's video. So first of all, let's talk about some of the engineer changes. Now, you'll notice in the title of the video, I put engineer buffs, and there's a reason for that. Bruce Brody, one of the producers on Battlefield 2042, was one of the members of the podcast. And he said that in patch 5.3, which is the Redux update releasing next Tuesday, there was going to be a balance pass for engineers. And he specifically said that it's a balance pass in order to make sure that the engineer class is fun to play and that people want to keep playing the engineer. He then followed that up by saying he can't confirm whether it's a buff or a nerf. But surely if your goal is to make sure that the engineer class is fun to play and that people want to play the engineer class, then let's be honest here, I can't really imagine it being a nerf. I see all over Reddit and other places online 
people wanting buffs for the engineer. They say the engineer is too weak. We need more launcher ammo, etc., etc. So I can't imagine any universe in which DICE takes the decision to nerf the engineer class. I think this is like a 100% going to be a buff. And that's why I put it here in the title. If I'm wrong, then sue me. But I'm almost certain I'm going to be correct. And what shape are those buffs going to take? I would probably guess we're going to see an increase to the amounts of launch ammo. So for the RPG and the M5 recoilless, I see that as being one of the biggest complaints is that engineers seem to think they should be able to solo a tank or any other piece of ground armor really with the ammo that they have without having to go to an ammo box. I'm not really sure I completely agree with that. You can definitely solo ammo by using the anti-tank grenade and taking the AP under barrel grenades for like the AK-24 or the SFAR. So that is definitely doable right now in the game. I think the issue really starts to begin when you just don't have any support players running an ammo box and nobody's actually dropping you that ammo. However, they could go for other routes. They may simply increase the damage that the launchers do, but I really do hope that they actually fix the RPG specifically because the RPG has had an issue ever since it was released where it's been dusting or not registering hits, especially on flying vehicles. So that really needs to be looked into and uh, fixed there. Now, in addition to that, hovercrafts are also going to see some slight tweaks and changes. So they're making some changes to the maneuverability of not just the attack helicopters that you guys may have heard about and we will be getting to later in the video, but also, interestingly, to the hovercrafts. So hovercrafts at the moment, I don't know about you guys, but I will always, 100% of the time, take an LATV4 over a hovercraft. The hovercrafts are just too damn difficult to control. They have too much horizontal drift. They never go where you want them to go, so I can definitely get behind this. I think from what Bruce Brody said in the podcast, that is his issue with them as well. They just drift all over the place a little too egregiously, so that is going to be toned down as far as I understand this. Now, as mentioned in some previous videos before, the attack helicopter, so the Apache and the Super Hokum, are going to see some improvements to their maneuverability. And what was interesting here is that apparently... This is going to be some sort of a test that they're then going to look into bringing out for some of the other vehicles. Now, it was unclear whether they were referring to, you know, necessarily the, the hovercraft maneuverability or the attack helicopters, but it sounds like this is just some sort of a starting point. And if successful and they're happy with where these vehicles land, they may start to apply similar changes to other vehicles in the game. They refer to this as being stage one for the vehicle improvements. Now, another big area that I would really like to see improve for the attack helicopters is the UI, the hood in the helicopter, the heads-up display, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty damn lacking in Battlefield 2042 compared to Battlefield 4. And Mr. Navy Proud here, I know he's a frequent viewer of the channel, so shout out to him. Thank you for watching, dude. But he put up this screenshot here on Reddit saying, can we have a proper hood on the Apache and the Hokum, a pip at least, which is predicted impact point, which basically shows you where your rockets are going to land. Uh, it would make these way more fun to play. And this is a screenshot from Battlefield 4's attack helicopters here. And as you can see, you've got a little indicator that tells you if you have flares already. You've got a direction indicator, a roll indicator, a pip. You've got a gunner seat indicator there to show you where your gunner is facing. So much more information is given to the player than what we currently have in Battlefield 2042. However, a few days ago, I did tweet out to one of the vehicle designers saying, hey, will part of the helicopter improvements be a predicted impact point by any chance? And he replied saying, uh, I doubt Kevin, that's the community manager and co, will be too happy with me spoiling bits here and there. So you're just going to have to wait it out for the patch. Now, I'm going to presume that if the answer to that question was just a straight up no, they would have just said, no, we don't have any plans for that at the moment. But since he said we're going to have to wait and see, and he's neither confirming nor denying, I think that's pretty much a given that we are going to see a pip for the attack helicopter. So that gives me hope that we're actually going to see, hopefully, a full overhaul of the UI for that vehicle. And that would be really, really awesome, honestly. It would also appear that the air vehicle numbers are going to be tweaked a little bit. So uh, this guy here, Exbeerkin, for lack of a better way of pronouncing that name, kind of hijacked my thread over on uh, X here. And he says, 
I doubt I'll get a response. Out of curiosity, how come in Battlefield 2042, there is only one slot for jets per side in All Out War? And he emphasizes All Out War there. When in past titles, there was at least two slots for jets, with the occasional extra more depending on the map. And Kevin actually replies here saying we're planning to change that more details in a few days. So I can only assume that given that this is in a few days, maybe, you know, with the patch notes that will hopefully be coming at some point this week, I'm going to guess Thursday or Friday we'll get the actual full update notes for update 5.3, which will be then dropping next Tuesday. It sounds like they're going to increase the number of jets. And I think that's really good. You know, having a wingman has always been part of Battlefield games. And when they went ahead and slashed all of the vehicle numbers to basically keep them tame and address their power, you know, I've really missed that. It's only one jet per side, you don't have a wingman that's kind of got your back. And furthermore, this could play into my theory here that the new vehicle that we are getting with Season 6 could well be an attack jet, or at least another kind of jet that shares the same spawn token as the F-35 and the SU-57. That would explain why we apparently are now going to get two slots for the jets per team, which would allow you to have one of the new jet and then one of the current air superiority jet fighters that we have in the game right now. Obviously, all speculation, but going on what Kevin says here, I would be pretty surprised if uh, we weren't at least seeing that jet increase there. All right, guys, just coming back slightly to game modes for a second here. This news actually just dropped as I was recording this video, but the Battlefield Communications channel just posted this here saying, back by popular demand, Control will be present and appear within rotation throughout Battlefield 2042 Redux every other week. Discover it within the new selection option titled Control and Rush and TDM. That is absolutely fantastic news. That was one of my small critiques about Redux, among you know lots of other things, but that's getting back to the content here, was that Control wasn't part of the package. Because in my opinion, this game mode right here was the best mid-season event and the best mid-season game mode that we've had in Battlefield 2042. And for my part, it can come back not just for Battlefield 2042, but for more Battlefield games in the future. I honestly thought it played fantastically. I love the Ascension points and being able to accrue those points in order to call in a vehicle. I just thought it worked really well together. So really awesome to see that coming back. But I will be interested to hear your thoughts down below, guys. Leave those there as usual, and I will do my best to get back to you. If you enjoyed the video here on the channel, leave a like. Go and check this video out here from the other day if you missed that one and it's something that interests you. Subscribe for more Battlefield content, and I will see you guys, as always, in the next video. Cheers.